place on the beach is... We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields. And in the streets. We shall never surrender. What has happened is a colossal military disaster. We shall go on to the end. We shall never surrender. The call went out. We have to go to Dunkirk. Ready on the stern line. What are you doing? You know where we're going. Into war, George. I'll be useful, sir. What about? He's on me. I'm on him. The ship's about to leave. Down you go. They need to send more ships. Every hour the enemy pushes closer. They've activated the civilian boats. Civilians? We need destroyers. Where are we going? Dunkirk! I'm not going back. If we go, they will die. You're weekend sailors, not the bloody navy. You should be at home! There's no hiding from this, son. We have a job to do. Turn it around! We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. Where's the bloody Air Force? First two weeks of shooting, we had huge storms and it was wet, it was raining, it was cold, but I mean, we were shooting our best material there, you know. We were always struggling with those elements and the tide would always come in faster than you would think. The swing of the tide, as indeed in the original events and the story of the film, is a major, major factor because the swing of the tide is colossal at Dunkirk. <laughs> Chris and I were like, oh, let's go and shoot, let's go, let's try to, let's try to shoot in this. It's a very extreme sort of extra element to have with you, and that always takes you by surprise. We ended up on various occasions coming in in the morning and finding that bits of our mole had been washed away overnight. And we were basically rebuilding the set while we were shooting something else. That's very much the Nolan way. We're out here, we're out here to work, we're out here to sort of live it a bit more. Being out on the mole when it's windy and rainy and you're kind of getting lashed and battered is quite trying. In a good way, though, it's going to look amazing. From a production point of view, it's exhilarating because you're standing there and you're looking at the thing unfold in front of you. It becomes absolutely part of how your character develops when you're actually in the environment and it's happening to you. It's very helpful to have a, a real Spitfire or two and a Messerschmitt and a couple of other things fly low over your boat. What of ours? And in the, the force of that engine. It's just insane to watch these you know, Spitfires feet above your head. When do you ever get to do that as a human being? You know, and, and, and playing, playing those situations, literally all you had to do was watch what was happening. It's so easy and so pleasurable when there's less to try and imagine. When you stand on a battleship, which is already crazy, and then a Spitfire goes by you. The audience will believe. I think they will just know and then they'll feel it. That's the reality that we want to give the audience so that they can feel that they're there. Knowing that this actually happened to people in real life makes it pretty intense. You're right there with those guys. You're right there with the kids. If you ask yourself the question, what would I do? Films need to tell very essential stories, mythical stories, an essential kind of experience. 
through the way that Chris has constructed the screenplay and, and is directing it. The audience gets a unique perspective that the participants don't have. The ship's about to leave! To see it on that big screen with a bunch of other people around them, they're going to have a really fantastic experience that they couldn't have anywhere else. For me, Dunkirk is the ultimate sort of life or death race against time. Every hour the enemy pushes closer. That's what the reality of the situation was, and so we've really tried to throw the audience into that with a degree of intensity, with a respect for history, but with a sense of entertainment, with a sense of the blockbuster. We want to give people a really intense ride as they go through it, really put people there and allow them to feel what that experience would have been like. There are 400,000 men trapped in one place, on a beach, their backs to the sea, the enemy closing in all around them. And it's just a matter of time before they face surrender or annihilation. And the fact that this story does not end in either surrender or annihilation is what makes it one of the greatest stories in, in human history, and one which I've been wanting to tell for, for quite some time. I'm not going back. There's no hiding from this, son. We have a job to do. 